It can be interesting to see the items that are used in a typical Orthodox service. They're related to, but not exactly the same as the things that are used in a typical Catholic service. Uh, those of you who are Roman Catholic will recognize and note a lot of the things are very, very similar. And some of them are slightly different shaped. Some of them are slightly different colored. Some of them are moved in different ways. But they all serve the same purpose, that is, they help us to celebrate the liturgy. They help us to do the work of the people. That's, that's what liturgia actually means. It's the work of the people. Not the work of the priest, not the work of the clerics, not the work of the people up on the altar, but of everybody. So let's have a look at the things that are actually used in my home chapel altar, which many of you have seen through the videos that I've been doing during this COVID-19 quarantining. Some of them will be very similar, some of them will be very traditionally orthodox, and a couple of them are just particular to myself and to my history and background. The first thing that you'll notice is that the altar cloth that I use is not the standard altar cloth. Uh, most of you from Catholic churches will be used to a white linen altar cloth and many in Orthodox churches will have had very ornate brocade and embroidered altar cloths. But this is actually a blanket. It's, it's a Pendleton blanket, a Native American uh, trade blanket. This particular one was originally designed to be a baby blanket. But because I'm Native American, and that's a very important part of my history and spirituality, I thought that would be a particularly useful thing to place as the basis for the altar and for the, for the service. In Native tradition, you never put any of your equipment on the ground. You always make sure that you have a blanket placed down to place your equipment and your, your important things upon. And that made a great place to start with for the altar here. You'll also notice behind on the wall a number of icons and for the Orthodox these are windows into heaven and they remind us that the Saints are always with us the cloud of witnesses as they refer to it are always with us as we celebrate the liturgy and they can be moved and changed and you can have different ones for the most part I leave the same ones up all the time but in a lot of churches they'll change them for the particular Sunday Incense plays a major role in Orthodox liturgical celebrations. This particular thurible is from India with bells. This incense device is more of the Hindu style but used often in India and it's very very useful uh, when you're working with a small altar area like I have. It's a little handheld one and the incense boat with the spoon to spoon out the pure frankincense is also there. The veil that I use is actually from Kochi in India and it is Jewish in origin and from the synagogue there. The antimension instead of the table is used in place of having an altar you can have the antimension anywhere. On the antimension you place the vessels this is the chalice that my parents gave to me when I was first ordained. They also gave a matching discos, uh, what the Roman Catholics would think of as a patent, and you'll see here the Blessed Mother engraved upon the patent. You can see that it is enameled, which is much more colorful than most of the standard Roman Catholic vessels that you will see, but not unusual. The asterisk, this little device that goes over the top, keeps the bread from having the cloth lay on top of it. And here you see that it is a matching set. And of course, Jesus is the most important icon on the vessels. There they are, covered with the veil and prepared for the serving of liturgy every Sunday. This is a trilingual service book from the Syriac tradition. 
in Syriac, Malayalam, and English. The sponge is used in Orthodox tradition to clean the vessels rather than using a purificator or a basically a cloth napkin. Cruets hold the water and the wine and sit on the side of the altar. They have their own preparation table. That's my bishop's ring. It's kind of hard to see, but it actually has my full bishop's crest on the ring. I wear an ingolpin rather than a panagia. An ingolpin is an icon rather than an icon of Mary. I have an icon of Jesus. I live here in the south, and that can be important. My blessing cross is a simple wooden cross with a printed icon, but a beautiful one. And of course, in the background is the Martoma cross, and the flowers behind it were from the funeral from Mar Bryan. I hope that answers some of the questions you may have had if you've been one of those people tuning in and watching the liturgy here from my home chapel during this COVID-19 quarantining, and that it helps you to understand a little more of what the uses for things are and how similar they are to things you may already have known. Have a wonderful day. God bless you all.